If you wish to be turning to the book of St. Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 17. Talking about uh, something that uh, some of the disciples seen and uh, it has a great meaning in uh, uh, their time and in a time to come. So we try to get into all that we can. Uh, it's been a blessing to study this chapter. But in chapter 17 of the book of Matthew, verse 1, and after six days, and uh, first of all, we want to look at this uh, thing here with six days. Uh, why wasn't it seven? Why wasn't it four? But I believe it's just the six days is a type of the 6,000 year reign uh, before Christ comes back. And, and this, is, this, is, this is something that's fixing, that's fixing to happen uh, before too long, I think. But anyway, it's just me. But anyway, I think that Jesus is, is uh, he's, uh, he's there ready to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we, we hope, for, hope it is anyway. But the six, the six and the 6,000, it kind of brings us to uh, uh, something here. But after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brethren, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was as white as light. Now, again, you, you imagine, if you can, the appearance of Jesus Christ when he comes back and, and is there on that cloud and he says, come up here. Yeah. You can see, you can understand here the 6,000 years. You can understand his, his uh, face shining and all this because this is, this is Jesus as he would be after he left the earth and as he's before his father. He's in this, this kind of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, this, this, complexion is altogether different and shining but it says here uh and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as light and of course again we we see this light that we uh see over in the book of genesis uh let there be light and that's this the light is the light of the world the light is our light the light is the main thing that we're to try to uh, look at and understand and not darkness and we's talking about this boy that done all this stuff hey he's in dark he's mm -hmm. in dark and people I, I mean i don't i have no desire to be there and uh he's there but anyway notice uh, uh, something that happened here and be, and behold there appeared unto them moses and elias or elijah taking with talking with him then peter then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the clouds which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And Amen. In, the, in this writing, and you can look through your uh, four gospels in this, that uh, he says, whom I am well pleased. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And, and, uh, and in one place there, uh, uh, Jesus was praying. And I believe it's in the 28th of uh, John uh, 12 28 but anyway he said uh, father glorify me and the father spoke back to him and said i have glorified you here's one of them and he said i will glorify you again and he did glorify him again uh, even through the death and through the resurrection of the lord jesus christ Amen. So here we see that he says uh with moses and, and light and while he yet spake Behold, a bright light overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the clouds, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Amen. So we want to see this morning what, what this picture is all about here, this uh, uh, revealing or this transfiguration uh, on the mount up there 
and uh, we'll see these these two people here over in the book of revelations again and we want to turn there if you would with me to uh, revelations 3 and just look a minute here at this <clears throat> maybe we can uh, bring out something here that will be uh, of interest to you and it will cause you to study more because these these two witnesses are described in Zechariah and they're described in uh, Exodus and they're they're just like what I was telling you about with Jesus saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and that I have honored him so notice in verse uh, in Revelation chapter 11 in verse 3 he says I will give power unto my two witnesses it's in Revelation 11 3 and I will, I may have told you wrong. I'm sorry if I did. 11.3. Uh, okay. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. Now this clothing typifies uh, uh, when someone is a... Uh, 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 was had lost uh, some of their loved ones or something. They were they were in uh, uh, agony, if you would, in this. But this is what they're going to be clothed in. It's like a, I think like a burlap, more or less. But anyway, notice here the two hundred, uh, two thousand and two hundred. Uh, I'll get it right in a minute. A thousand two hundred and three score days. Now I I took my pencil out and I figured this out. It's three and a half years, right? Right. Here. Right down to the time. It's three and a half years. This is part. This is one half of the tribulation period, right. where that these two witnesses are going to be. And I'm assuming by what happened to them that it's the first half, because they are there in Israel, they are there uh, uh, in Jerusalem or wherever, and they are teaching these people. They are they are preaching the gospel to them, and it is tearing the people all to pieces. Right. right? They hate them, they despise it, and, and by that you can tell the condition of Israel, how it's going to be in the last days. It's, listen, they're not, going to come, they're not going to turn to Jesus Christ through the preaching of these two, two people. They're not going to do it. The only time that they'll ever turn is when they see Him come. Then they'll know that it is Him. They'll see him and they will they will turn to Jesus. But right now they are not turning. And and uh, even uh, at, at, before we get to this, you notice here what uh, uh, in verse one. And there was given me a reed like unto a, gold, a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar of them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out. And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tread underfoot forty and two months. And so this is what this is what these two, these two, and, and it's Moses and it's Elijah, uh, and, and and here's some of the things that that both of them can do. Read this just in a minute to you. Notice in. Uh, in verse uh, 5 and uh, just a minute let me, I've lost my thought in verse 3 and I will give power to my two witnesses and they shall prophesy okay I read it these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devours their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must be in this manner killed. And so for the three and a half years that they're there and those people are, are, are uh, hollering against them and trying to kill them and all this, if anything, if they do anything to one of them, it says that fire comes out of their mouth. Now, I, right. don't, know, I don't know if it's a, a, a burning fire like that or if the word of God comes out in such a way that it causes them to, to run or to die or whatever. But it says, uh, and uh, these, now notice here, and this is, this is some of the things that I, I want you to remember this. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy 
and have power over water to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now here, here is the power of Elijah. When the Lord said to Elijah in chapter 17 of 1 Kings, he told him, he says, <clears throat> in 1 Kings 17, <clears throat> Let's see. I'll get this right in the chapter 17 of 1 Kings. Uh, I didn't write down the chapter verse. Okay. Uh, let me find it just a minute. Bear with me. Thought I had it marked. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, this is where Elijah was and the and the then the and the Lord told him to go over this, this, well, he told Ahab, is who he told. I, I thought I had it marked right. Anyway, Elijah told Ahab, he said, it's not going to rain for years. And after that, the Lord told Elijah, he said, you go down by this creek, mm -hmm. and I forget the name of it, and he said, you stay there, and I'll, I'll take care of your needs. Well, it was such a drought that the creek dried up. And, uh, and, the, and the raven had fed him, and you know the story, and he got the water. This is, this is the same thing. These have power to shut up heaven that it rain not. Mm -hmm. And so this is pointing directly to Elijah. He's going to be there as, <coughs> as one of them in Israel preaching. And he's going to have Moses with him. Now notice. And, and, uh, and have power over water to turn them to blood. Now you remember when Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go. Right. All right. Then Moses went in, and he told he told Aaron, he didn't do it himself, but he told Aaron, he said, "You take that rod and you go out there and touch that water, and everything in Egypt turned to blood. Mm -hmm. All the water turned to blood." So this is pointing again, and a lot of people think that that it's other people, but I believe these are the two that will be there. But he says, these have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and that they're preaching, the days of their preaching, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. People, it's going to be a bad time. Amen. And, 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 uh, and Egypt, Egypt, Egypt seen it. Egypt, Egypt seen it, and they and, and the <coughs> apostles and, and all recorded it. And but but Israel and them, they didn't, they don't, they don't believe it yet. Right. But listen, they are going to believe it. I'll guarantee you that, that these two prophets here will make believers out of them, and they will they will get to see it. But no, notice then in verse seven, and when they shall have finished the and and I. Uh, this other thing here besides this is plagues and I didn't bring it out but, but it's in Exodus 2 and when they shall have in verse 7 shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them right so now this to me is you know where uh, Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire and Moses was carried by God over on a mountain, or went up there, and, and he died up there. And he was buried, and nobody don't know where his grave is at. So here he's making this second appearance to show, uh, to show that, uh, that the Bible was telling the truth about it. But anyway, he says here that, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottom's pit shall make war against them and, uh, read this, and, 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 over kill, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually, listen to this, spiritually called Sodom and Gomorrah. This is when Israel will be identified as Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Now you know that's, and that's, uh, there's going to have to be a big change over there, but but listen, it's going to happen. Those people are going to be so sinful and so uh, mean that they're going to have to see this come. And listen, what happens about this? 
And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So we know where they're talking about. Right. And they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. And here again is, is, is the completion of the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. And not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry mm -hmm. and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. <laughs> so, you know, these old boys right here, Moses and Elijah, they was they was putting it out. Mm -hmm. They're they they're preaching the old law more than likely. They're they're coming right back and, and, and telling these Jews all of this about the laws and all. And they're and they're putting grace into it too. And and it just it the the Jew cannot understand that. So this is why that they're so happy about this. And I one time I was reading this or made us some kind of statement. I, I said it must be around Christmas time. They're sending gifts. But anyway, they're so happy if it's the fourth of July or the tenth of May, they'll be they'll be that happy listen because right. listen you take a whole country like that and they are all like that it's got to be it's 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 the same thing it's the same thing that Saul had wrong with him when he got permission to take to get letters to go and 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 kill and put in prison those people mm -hmm. and that's when that God stopped him on that on that road and, and, and said to him, why do you persecute me? Hey, listen, they're, pers they're still persecuting. They, they still know what this is all about. Right. And so, listen, here, and, and, uh, and they, in verse uh, 9, and they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer them. And, and then I've got, I, I want to read on down here. And then in verse 11, and after three days and a half, the Spirit uh, of God enters into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is, this is, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, listen to this, was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and the earthquakes were sl slain of the men seven thousand and the women were affrighted and gave glory to the god of heaven so finally they some of them's eyes are open so back now in our lesson this morning in 17 matthew 17. so this here is what the, this is what Peter and them saw when they seen this transfiguration before them. And uh, you notice here, Peter is the only one that said anything about building a temple or anything. And he was always, there was James and John, they, they didn't say anything about it. But notice uh, in verse 6, And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were frightened. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw an old man say, Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, and we was, we was discussing this Wednesday night a little bit about why Jesus told them this. He says, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. In other words, when he would do these miracles, he, he and, and do these things, he would say, always say to the to the to the to the disciples, don't tell nobody, don't tell nobody. And and uh, of course, we was discussing it just a little bit. But listen, if they had of if they had of continued uh, praising Jesus and telling about the miracles that he done. Uh, you remember even in the temple when he would do things and then he hid himself and he and one place there the Bible says that they would he that they would come to make him king mm -hmm. listen this scripture this scripture had to be fulfilled and if the disciples had went around and and telling people all the things that Jesus had done 
there might have been a conflict there and Jesus could not have done as many as he did and Jesus uh, didn't want that right he wanted to stay in the background he he wanted to do these miracles but he did not want the praise of the people and 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 interfere with what he and God had discussed in eternity about what he would do because there was I believe with all my heart there was a discussion between God and Jesus Christ in eternity before and they planned out this whole thing it was all it was all a plan every little thing every little jot and every little tittle the Bible says he kept it and there was a plan for Jesus to do this and had had they have had they have started praising Jesus Christ and all of this, uh, and they would have tried to uh, make him something that he didn't come to be mm -hmm. uh, at that time because he he came to be a sacrifice for our sins, mm -hmm. and that's the only way that he could get to the cross is to reject to reject the praise of men. And so this morning, these are some of the things that I wanted to to read to you uh, and. Uh, uh, I got another thing or two here. I wanted to uh, to uh, uh, the, uh, the well, I done done that. The olive trees you can find in Zechariah four if you if you want to look it up if you want to make a note about it. And then there's a the candles the candlestick. It mentions it in here too. That was uh, in, in uh, 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 I think it's in Exodus Exodus where this uh, where this all that. But anyway, it all typifies the the two uh the two men here and uh they're they'll they're they're going to be there and i i wanted to uh make sure that i got all i can could out of this because uh it's so interesting to know that god's word four five thousand years ago that was wrote by <coughs> us, it's still true today amen and and, and sometimes we let the devil cause us to doubt mm -hmm. and say well that shouldn't be a the or a the or a you or a me but listen it's perfect there's no flaws in it mm -hmm. it's and it's 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 stood the it's stood the ages of time amen and when, when, when we read something like this uh so many times so many times you can you can remove the the top layer off and get a little bit deeper and you find a gold mine Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and and so many times I read something like that, and uh, even even over there when so and so got, begot so and so and so and so begot so and so. Listen, there's 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 gold there. If Amen. We can, if we can break it off and because it's all and it'll never it'll never all be understood. And so any time that you open the, the the Bible and you read something, and the devil says to you, well they've read that. They've read that. They've read that four or five times. He's taught on that four or five times. Listen, that's the same. That's the thing that sometimes that I have a problem with because I can I can find something and I, I have a desire to teach it. Well, they've heard that. They know that, and, and you know. But the thing of it is, uh, I don't really have to listen to that. Right. It's, it, because listen, when I get to studying, when I get studying one thing. The, 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 the Lord always shows you something else that, mm -hmm. that makes makes it better. So anyway, this is something you should think of uh, for next week and uh, read, about, read about, study about, and, and maybe uh, you'll get a better, better blessing. Than you Amen. Thank you all.